Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now, before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. It's usually all scripted, but I've said it now probably a hundred yeah. times, so I you usually know it. it. No, I have, I have messed it up occasionally oh. <laughs> here. Um, so I have January Weesey, not Weesey. I knew that. I yes. figured that out for the first year I, I hung out here. So she's in charge of everything that that I've been going to uh, this year and also prior years, and she's been very instrumental in allowing me to to do this um, uh, in my world. Um, and I really appreciate. It. I just thanked her before we got started. And um, so January, kind of uh, tell us who you are, how'd you get here, what drove you to do this? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Mark. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we love having you here at the symposium. Um, I love that you get to take this time to see all of the other, you know, wineries and do your interviews and all that stuff. But also you are so focused, I guess is the okay. word, in our sessions and you ask questions and you interact with our speakers. And I just love that about you because you are so involved and you want to learn more. And it's really cool to see, like you just asked a question right. in there, you know, and then I've seen that throughout the years when you participate. So we, I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, I'd like to take advantage of being able to come here because as I've mentioned many times, either in any other interviews I've done here or just any type of recap stuff or just talking to people just in general, I use things like this um, that aren't necessarily geared towards me as a sommelier or as a, as a, um, a, a seller of wine versus, um, it doesn't necessarily apply to me directly okay. with my understanding of wine or my studies, but I find it's helpful for me to, as a reviewer, and, and also when I go visit other places to be able to intelligently talk about or talk with people yeah. without necessarily having to be like super nerdy and understand all the chemistry. Yeah. I at least have some, you know, some stuff like I'll, I'll say that, um, the, the, um, Virginia. Yeah. Emily. Okay. So and talking about pH yeah. and their, and total acidity and potassium. And while I have a very basic understanding of all that, I found it fascinating because well one it was also at a level where i didn't have to really worry about looking at formulas where right. some of the other stuff was definitely above my head but still fascinating and yeah. so i joke with people all the time you know, i go to these sessions and I, I i'm gonna understand only a little bit but i still glean something out yeah. of it whereas something like a texom is very much geared towards my yeah. part of the industry yeah. so yeah. those informational sessions um, are going to get geeky in different ways right. than maybe like a winemaker was like, what are you talking about? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, and so I, I told somebody uh, that I'm also somewhat unique in the fact that um, I'm one of the few people in my side of the industry, whether it was back when I was in the restaurant side or now I'm in the retail side, that comes to these things as an attendee rather than, you know, somebody that's giving us a uh, talk like Scott Oda's right. been here right. a yeah, couple yeah. times. I was actually on a, a yeah. last minute on a panel yeah. with him, which was yep. really cool and a little yeah. bit like, uh, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, other than someone doing that and being part of that, part of that, um, I don't really see, see any of my colleagues yeah. at something like this, yeah. but I think that they would get value out of it. I do too. And I think that we get value out of you being here because you might not, you might say that it's, it doesn't necessarily pertain to your job in wine, you're selling wine and as a SOM, but you knowing more about what's happening specifically here in Texas and in the Hill Country is in the long run going to help you sell more wine if that's what you're selling because you know our stories mm -hmm. and you know more about what's really happening here and the struggles and the things that we're working on and stuff so yeah. i mean i see it that way for yeah me. i i, I, I yeah i agree with that i mean i i without saying who i work for i forgot yeah. to tell you we don't say who i work for um but the fact that i sell more texas wines where i work now than yeah. i ever did in my restaurants yeah um it does allow me to have that extra bit of expertise yeah versus the rest of the people I work with. Yeah. So when someone's asking about Texas wine, I can go, here's 
Yeah. Here's my section. Yeah. And I can point to individual wineries, especially people that I may have interviewed in the past right, right. because I have that connection with yeah. them. So I'm more likely, but it's also, I also want to do that with any of the other the wines over the years, whether yeah. it's retail or, yeah. or, or restaurants. If I visited a winery or visited a region, I feel more comfortable yes. talking about those wines and selling those individual wines. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is, it does directly work for what I do. But at the same time, you kind of look at it, it's like, well, why would you go to that? Well, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these winery owners and winemakers and growers, um, have, I feel kind of become friends Yes, because I've been doing this now for God, well over 10 years now, yeah. uh, in, in, uh, meeting with and traveling to Texas wineries. Yeah. So, um, it, it's kind of like seeing, Old colleagues, yeah. not so, old, but you know, yes, colleagues yeah. you've known for, for a while. A while, yeah. <laughs> it's a reunion. Yeah, and, yeah, Absolutely. and we're all family, and so yeah. yeah. So I just thank you for coming. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, so how did yes. you get into Sorry. all this? What, what's your background? <laughs> you know, and, and and I know a little bit because you 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 say this every once in a while, but I don't really know yeah. kind of your story. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I'm super proud of my story, but I just don't talk about it a okay. lot because um, it's my story and I'm here to share their stories. Yeah. Um, so I grew up in California. I was um, raised in Southern California and my dad had grown up on the East Coast and farming and his family had the little farm and stuff and he always wanted that for us. And so we, um, when I was in the sixth grade, moved up to Paso Robles, California and bought a vineyard in Templeton and my dad was just going to be a grape grower. And about six months in, the neighbors came over and said, we think you should start a winery and make wine. And so he did. Mm -hmm. um, he started Jan Chris Winery and named it after my sister and I. And um, we grew up working in the family business. And that's just, you know, all I knew and loved. Um, I went away to school to for ag business to Montana State and um, came back and my goal was to run the family business and I did for a long time. And then I got married and we had a baby and as everybody knows, family business is mm -hmm. family business. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, we decided, my husband's from Texas and so we decided to move out here and um, when I when he said we, he wanted to move, um, I said, you know, all I know is wine, so I gotta find some place with wine, and so we found it. Cool, Montana State. Yes, I rodeoed and um, got to rodeo up there. A few months ago, I had lunch with Anne Bousquet, so Domaine du Bousquet, and she relayed the story. We, we, I didn't get to interview her, but we should relate a story that when she went to do her graduate program, no, her undergrad. It was undergrad. Anyway, she well, she did she did schooling in 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 uh, France because her family's from France from from uh, Carcassonne, uh, and they were they 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 did the grape growing and all, all that there. And then she went to Minnesota. And I was like Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. And she goes, well, the brochure didn't show it had any snow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, granted, you know better <laughs> being from this country. Yeah. But um, she said everything. But yeah. she, and they, she was there. She, I think she, was, she did her she did her graduate studies there. So, yeah. And that's where she met her husband. Yeah. Um, and then they eventually took over the Argentine yeah. winery. But yeah, Montana State. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I when I was looking at schools, it was a, one of the top five schools in for ag business at okay. the time. Uh, the rodeo team was one of the top in the nation and I ski so yeah well there you go perfect. exactly and and really my dad's rule actually was because Cal Poly is right down the road we mm -hmm. probably both my sister and I should have gone to Cal Poly all things that we were doing and and everything and his rule was that we had to go out of state we had to go away to school so we could grow up and perfect. become our own person so, no that's great yeah Absolutely. and it was everything we needed it to be yeah. yeah. Um, cool. I, I stayed in state, <laughs> but my degree program was not even close to what, to what you were doing. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So you get, so you come to Texas and you get into the wine industry. So yeah. where, what were you doing with that? Yeah. So my first job here, um, I was hired at Flat Creek Estate Winery. I was their event coordinator. They had just built the pavilion mm -hmm. and uh, Rick and Madeline taught me everything I know about Texas wine. Okay. Um, I was there for about a year and a half. And um, then we decided to do some things. I had we had another baby and um, decided to do some traveling in our lives. And so we left. And while we were doing that, um, Katie Jane Seaton 
called me and said, um, she was the executive director for THCW and she called me and said, we have an event coordinator position opening up and you should apply. And so I did. And and we just remembered the other day that Gil Bledsoe of Pillar Bluff, he was my uh, first phone interview for this position. Okay. And um, I eventually got that a couple months later and we moved back down to, um, we moved to North Texas, but okay. eventually landed here when Katie Jane um, eloped with her grape grower. And they asked me if I wanted to take over as executive director, and I did about okay. 12 years ago. All right, so that's the Texas Hill Country. I'm sorry, Texas Hill Country Wineries Association. Wineries. Wineries Association. Yes. Okay. Yes. So just like your hat. Thank you. you it's a great hat. Um, <laughs> so speaking of that, so then, so you did that, and then what brought you to creating this symposium? Yeah. Um, so in like 2014, um, we were. As a, as a group at another event and at another conference. And um, a lot of our members were there and came up and said, you know, we we want deeper education, we want higher education. Like we want more than this 101 education that we're seeing everywhere. And um, we just kept hearing that for a couple of days. And I sat down with John Ravenberg and Chris Brundrett, who were on the board for sure, maybe vice president and president of the association at the time. And they said, we're going to do this. This We want to do a conference. Uh, we had been doing some grower field days, mm -hmm. which were um, pretty simple. A couple courses in the morning, maybe two, a lunch, and then courses in the afternoon. And then we'd actually lead into a dinner, which was a fundraiser for A&M AgriLife um, in Fredericksburg. And we did about six of those. And so we'd been doing that part of the education. We'd been doing tasting room manager luncheons for a while. And they said, let's just pull it all together and do something big. And so um, I said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and our first one, we weren't sure what to expect. And so we started small. We held it at the Hill Country University Center in Fredericksburg. Mm -hmm in the HEB room, and that's where we had lunch. We did theater-style tables. Um, we had a buffet lunch brought in, and we did court, er, sessions in there, and then we just had one breakout room right down the hall, um, and it only held maybe 50 people at the most. Um, so we were there for two days. I was only supposed to have 125 people, and by the end of the first day, we had like 150, because at the last, you know, you, you for these types of events, you got to give everybody your numbers like 10 days before or whatever. So I had it and we were right on 125. But then in between then and the start, people were like, I want to come. I want to come. And I can't say no to anybody. So I was like, come on. <laughs> Even day of, I was like, yeah, come on. It's fine. We have plenty of food. I knew I had plenty of food. Yeah. Um, so we were busting at the seams the end of day one. And we decided, well, this was a really big success. Let's go bigger. So. All right. And then you, then the next year you came moved, here, right? Yep. And then we moved here to Horseshoe Bay and we've been here ever since, except for 2021 when we had to, you know, nobody could do anything. Right. And yeah. so we did a virtual symposium. Well, even like, uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, 20, so 22, was 22 Snowmageddon? No. <sighs> we have had so many Snowmageddon. Yeah. yeah 22. There was, was one year. There was there was one year that yeah, twenty was some again. Yeah. But there was one year. I, I I don't know if it was twenty twenty or twenty twenty two, where we had the threat of an ice storm coming yeah. on the the last day. Yeah. And I know right. I was planning on staying yeah. one more night. And I was, I was back then. It was probably twenty two because twenty, twenty twenty. I probably stayed here. Yeah. Um. I was staying in Marble Falls. And there's a big bridge you got to cross. Yeah. And I was like, I, I can't get home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. So Everybody I, was like packing up and leaving early. Yeah. And yeah. So I, 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 jetted, and it, I mean, nothing really happened. And I could have stayed a day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it, it was 22 because um, my dad and I had gotten COVID post mm -hmm. <laughs> symposium yeah like he had actually texted me saying that he had he had tested positive i was like oh of no uh, yeah so um anyway so yeah when, whenever that was but but yeah um so you we've had it here um the facility is great it um is. i've I've, I've, been, I've stayed here a couple times yeah. it's wonderful wonderful place yeah um and john's had talked about how he, he's like tradition, like he likes, it's in the he same did. place mm -hmm. every time. And I agree yeah. because you get to know the lay of the land. If you're yeah. an attendee, frequent attendee, you know, you know what to expect instead of like a new place, where's everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mentioned that back in, in one of my, all my times at Texom, 
again, be at the same place. Right. And when you're a volunteer, you also really need to know those things. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so you it's it's really expanded. So about how many attendees did you have this year? Well, you asked me like two minutes after we closed the event. So I haven't been able, and I, people have been asking me for the last three days. So when I left my house on Sunday, we had 400 people. Wow. Um, and last year we closed after it was all said and done, we had 410. Okay. Um, but we had, by the time I left my house and this morning, we had people still buying late tickets, um, people showing up and purchasing tickets and attending, you know, right here on site. So, um, and I think also my website and my other list didn't quite sync perfectly. Okay. Um, so we had some people show up that were supposed to be on the list. So I have a feeling we're going to be around 440 this year. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So what was this hat? Why did I buy this hat? Yeah. Besides so, it was a sweet hat. <laughs> I know it's so cute, right? Kate, our communications coordinator designed it. They're so great. I love them. Um, so we are actually Texas Hill Country Wineries is celebrating its 25th anniversary this right. year. We, the association started back in 1999 when eight grower or eight wineries got together and decided they wanted to drive more traffic to their tasting rooms through some events. And But they met in February of 99. And by the time they launched their first event, which was the Wine and Wildflower Passport in April of mm -hmm. that year, they were up to 16 members because okay. they were, you know, talking to their neighbors and Everybody was interested and wanted to join. And so the association has grown. Um, and we have a whole list of numbers, 16 to 21 to 27. There were 27 members when I worked at Flat Creek. Okay. Um, and now we just uh, two days ago voted in our three newest members and we're at 67 members now. Cool. Yeah. All right. So what does the organization do for, for, for the Hill Country? Yeah. So we are a nonprofit trade association, trade and marketing association. So our number one goal for our member wineries, and to be a member winery, you have to have a full production winery within the Hill Country AVA boundaries. Um, we also have affiliate members who can have a tasting room here, but have to be a full production winery within the state of Texas. Okay. Um, so our number one goal is to market and promote our wineries and drive traffic to them. So we have the website and the brochure, and we've, we're still hosting the passport events. We have mm -hmm. four every year, um, and we've definitely expanded, and I can get into more of that. Um, but right around, right before we started the symposium 10 years ago, when, when we sat down and talked about it and we had been doing those grower field days, we realized we needed to do more on the industry side. And so we started working more with A&M and tech and supporting them any way we could and hosting the luncheons and the field days. And we actually did a couple of like one-off seminars where we'd bring in speakers from out of state for a whole day. Mm -hmm. um, and really wanted to increase that side of it so we could help our members, our growers and our wineries. And then every part of their business from tasting room managers to event managers to, um, you know, bookkeepers and everything, just get more information, get more connected and, and help them grow and, and, and get bigger and better. Okay. Um, so yeah, so how you've designed the symposium, you have different tracks that, I mean, they don't have to stay on the one track, but you, right. you have different tracks that they can, they can, uh, look at. So can you describe yeah. what, what those are? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have a vineyard track and a winery track and a business track. And so, um, we try to keep those pretty even. And then the first day on Monday, we started doing a new winery vineyard track. Mm -hmm. um, we had that mixed in for a while, but we decided to separate that out. So people who were really new could come focus on that, but then still attend the next two days, which would hopefully just add on to what they learned on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, so new vineyard and winery is pretty clear for new right. growers and wineries, but we are having a lot of existing wineries come and say like, oh, that was a really good refresh. Like I forgot, you know, I knew that I was supposed to be doing that in my winery, but I kind of forgot. And that was like a reminder, you know, and yeah, right? I'll, you know, do this differently or whatever. So that's been really cool. Um, and then Vineyard Track, we, um, We've had speakers today. We had a speaker from UC Davis, and we have um, speakers from Texas State, and of course A and M and and Tech 
always mm-hmm. have um, presenters here. Um, but then we also do, you know, growers. We had a panel, of, a grower and a winery and a vineyard manager, you know, the other day where we can talk about more what's actually happening, you know, in these smaller vineyards and stuff. So we try to do some local grower stuff on that side. Um, the winery side, Seth Urbanek was He's our committee chair this year. He has a ton of contacts. Absolutely, and so, yes. I mean, some of the speakers, I was just like, I don't know how, you know, we got this person. Like, it's super cool, the contacts he has. And so we brought in a lot of speakers from out of state this year for for a lot of the winery tracks. Um, in the past, we've done some really cool winemaker panels. I have a feeling that'll be back next year um, where we get a number of our, our wineries here from across the state that will bring, a you know, one varietal or one style or something like that and get up there and talk about it with a moderator. Um, so we try to mix that up as well. And then the business side, um, we narrowed that down a little bit. It was pretty broad. Um, we pulled out marketing last year and had a whole marketing and sales track, but we wanted to bring it all back under one. So we have sessions on HR and in, and this is, you know, over the past 10 years, HR and insurance and uh, bookkeeping and valuation, but then also on staff training and wine clubs. And so it kind of covers a whole yeah. whole gamut of topics. Yeah, and I attended a few of those. So like, this is where I kind of talk about like, well, do I really need to see, do I really need to go to the HR yeah. seminar? Yeah. Probably, Probably not. not. Yeah. Um, as someone who's been a manager for most of my career, um, I'm familiar, I've never, not in the HR department, but I've been very familiar with HR issues yeah. at different places I've worked at. So it wasn't that I, I learned anything new on that, But I got to hear um, the perspective of the wineries. And also considering we have so many smaller wineries, um, I've I've come from mostly corporate world. So you have like large HR departments. Like it's not like one person's HR along with being, you know, the general manager, the tasting manager, probably the janitor, right? Or the owner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so um, but it was interesting to hear where where they were at and how they were developing their their programs having three different size wineries yeah. um so that was that was interesting you know and like so 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 some of the some of the seminars I didn't go because I expected to learn a learn anything relevant i wanted just to understand or kind of hear what they've got yeah. going on yeah like you know i went to jessica's um thing and while i am already in the media she handles something completely different right, than right. i do right? right um or she you know she she she's in a different style of the media and i walked out saying so not that i really need to be here but maybe i do yeah and it allowed me to hear well one i get to understand her a little bit better yeah. even i've known her for quite a yeah. while uh, understand what she does and i and my background prior to all the restaurants was I was I came out of a newspaper family, so I understand print, I understand yeah. lead times. Not that we were an editorial, we were all circulation. Well, yeah. my my side was circulation, but I still was part of that. I was in magazines for a while, again distribution for that. Right. But you you know that there's lead times. You know yep. things are things are planned out months and months yeah. in advance, right? So um, in which. Hey, PR people, don't ask me uh, the month of December about my coverage for Christmas, all right? <laughs> you should know better. Um, I probably already have my wines decided. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, but something like that, I, again, I've got to hear what the wineries, what they what they kind of, even though Jessica was giving them the media's expectations, mm-hmm. I got to hear what they wanted out of right. the coverage, right? right? And again, it doesn't directly apply to me on all levels, but there was something I gleaned out of that. Yeah, that you could take away. Yeah, I love that. That's awesome. Um, So this was, was this the first you had four keynotes? Yeah. Yeah. So talk about that. What happened? Why did you do that? Yeah. So we, there have been years where we haven't had a keynote um, where we've really focused on tastings. We've done like four tastings and we do those by themselves. So as many people can attend those as possible. Um, And then years that we've had a keynote. And, you know, when you hear about a keynote, you're like, okay, well, that's like the one person. It's like the best person that's going to speak at this conference. And and sometimes it is maybe. Mm -hmm. But for us, a keynote is like, this person or this topic is that important that we want as many people to attend as possible. So we're not going to do a, a other sessions because we run three sessions at a time mm-hmm. per per time slot. Um, so 
I, I just, I'm always like, it's a, it's one, you always have one keynote. And when we sat down to plan this out and we had all these topics and these speaker suggestions, Seth was like, but I want everybody to hear this. And I want everybody to hear this. And then I want everybody to hear this. So then he, we, we had four on yeah. the list that were like, and our theme this year was sustainability. And mm -hmm. so it was like, he wants everybody to hear these people. And so we put them in keynote spots and we had yeah. one each day. And then today we had one at lunch. Right. Yeah. And uh, I attended, of course, keynote, I did that. And I attended the other two smaller sustainability um, yeah. seminars. Uh, I was able to glean different things from that. And um, and yeah, I, so you, she, uh, January alluded to that was, especially in the keynote participatory. Um, you know, I've done farming practices videos. I, I'm very fairly knowledgeable compared to maybe some other people in my side yeah. of the of the of yeah. the of the business what the difference between sustainable and organic and bio and regenerative yeah. and which regenerative was brought up mm -hmm. in a couple of the seminars so I'm, I'm glad to hear other people yeah. are, know about that um but it's it's something that uh is interesting and i and it, you can't know everything especially with sustainability there's so many different yeah. standards so having someone from new york Talk about their challenges versus what happens in Texas versus right. you know other parts of the world. Um, I think it was it was great too, so that people in Texas, the growers here and the wineries here, can kind of understand that there isn't a one size fits all. Right. Um, the, it really is a good idea to kind of tailor it to your region. Or I mean, New York's a big state, but not right. like Texas thing. Right. Um, but you know, tailoring it to your area, yeah. um, I think is very uh, very important. Though yes, we have country level sustainability programs right. in, in parts of the world. Um, yeah, so I mean- even glean that, just that starting point, yeah. right? From him, from that presentation, like where could we start? How could we get this started? Yeah. If that's all we get from it, then that's, because we might not be exactly the same as what New York is doing, but like, mm -hmm. let's take this idea and then grow that, that, that works for us. That's yeah. kind of what the thought was behind it. And their program is really, brand new yeah like so they're still they're still figuring stuff out yeah. and you know they've been working on this kind of concept for a while right. their program that they're putting out right now is like like brand new right so um so what else uh i mean oh so besides the symposium so you have other things you do throughout the year i've been able to participate in some of those some of them i can't go because they're winemaker only but i <laughs> So I, the one I do want to go to, I, I you know, want to talk I know, about that? The one, the one I always want to go to. I want to go to the ones where they all bring, they all bring their wines, <laughs> yeah. so they can all rip each other and, and help each other <laughs> yes. with their wines. And when that, I, I emailed Jeremy once, like, can I go? He goes, eh, probably not. They don't really want anyone outside. I was like, yeah. I'm not going to like report on it. I just want to <laughs> attend because to me that's all the good stuff. But you know. Anyway, so but you have different you have different events throughout the year that that um, for um, anyone interested and in, I know it's for members, but I'm but being an industry, pretty much is yeah. it's pretty much open. I mean, it is yeah. actually yeah. All of our all of our industry all of our events are open. To anybody yeah. Um, because we have the consumer events, but on the industry side, they're all open to everybody. The only difference is, of course, we have member pricing and not member pricing. Yeah, right. right? For some of them, most of our stuff is free. I know. Yeah, it's um, great. We do grower field days throughout the year. So we have a grower winemaker committee and we combine them. They used to be separate, but we combine them so they can really work together so that growers can say, well, we think winemakers should learn this. And wineries can say, well, we think growers need to know this. So we work together on that. So we do these um, grower tailgates, which are, we try to do about six a year. And I call them like the super easy, casual, just come as you are. Mm -hmm. um, we use one of our, our local vineyards, throw out just a general topic about kind of what time of year it is and so what's happening in the vineyard and throw that out and our committee members will go so they can kind of direct the conversation. But I um, call it like a, well, pull your pickup truck, truck out there and sit on the tailgate and grab a beer and just talk, you yeah. know? So it's kind of like just an easygoing, networking, kind of a good old boys get together and talk about what's happening you know, back in the day, like on your ranch or in your, on your farm. And so in your vineyard. Yeah. Um, so we have those, which are open to everybody. Yeah. Um, and then we have our tasting room manager luncheons, which is geared more towards like, we do topics from wine club to events, to dealing with, you know, crowds and reservations and best practices and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And then we do have the winemaker tastings. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I remember that email. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I, to, I've tasted with a lot of winemakers yeah. on and off camera. And not that not that they're ever going to show me anything that might have any problems. They're not going to. But we have talked about we we do talk about these things but mm -hmm. yeah that particular one is more kind of like i just wanted to, like like going to a seminar that i have really no direct yeah. reason to be there and just kind of understand what they're doing yeah but yeah i mean but i think it's great that you do that because now you're you're getting that camaraderie and you're getting yes. that that um people helping each other yep. with hey i have a problem with this wine yep. what do i do to fix it that's exactly it so even now kate and i don't go mm -hmm. when we started them i would go uh, she wasn't with us back then so i would go and i would set it up and stuff and just sit and make sure like they needed any, anything and now they do it on their own i don't even go and the reason i don't is because we call it a safe space for them yeah. right so it is winemakers only and seller staff you right, know yeah, yeah. but like we put in the invite no owners no tasting room managers you know no HR people, whatever, because we no want them. you reporters. <laughs> well, that's the, I know you're not going to report on, and I know yeah. for you, you are so interested in that side of things, but we want them to be able to go in and just say like, yes. And, and we, there is one that we do where we say, bring a flawed wine. Yeah. And they each bring a wine that they, that either was flawed and they fixed and they talk about how they did it, mm -hmm. or they bring one that has a problem right now. Right. Yeah. And they're like, what you know what would you guys do and so it's that safe space where they can talk about those things as winemakers and colleagues and help each other and and build that camaraderie and then uh, you know build up the industry yeah so, exactly you know sometimes yeah. you don't want your dirty laundry aired out to everybody yeah. right yeah um i totally get it <laughs> and you know even if reporter or not i mean i i can see them in there holding back right yeah because if who, it's who's somebody who's yeah that they don't know understands what exactly what they're talking about and just you know kind of not not and getting there well i do know a lot of people in the industry i don't know everybody and not everyone knows me to us some of them just know i i come to these things right, they don't know right. much about me and i totally get it i'd be like right. why is this guy here sure. like are you do you make wine no yeah. well, what what do you like yeah yeah not even just being a reporter let's say i was just an enthusiast right right, right. You know, like, why, why is this person here? Right. But yeah, I had to kind of get that in. <laughs> <laughs> so any uh, winemakers that want to like say, hey, yeah. I got something messed up. You want to come check it out. Don't yeah. bring the camera. Yeah. You nope. know, and don't don't bring the audio recorder that the New York almost came out there. The audio recorder, <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm down with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But yeah, the, the, this the symposium and what you all do um in for for the community and uh, for hill, hill country i've been lucky to do attend a lot of these things um yeah a lot of them are free or like back in april you had like like a little industry pre thing before like a public tasting right yes you know yeah. and that was wonderful you know i got to and that was actually the day i took my theory exam last yes, year i remember and i was like rushing to get yep. up here or not here up to austin yeah um but that that allows me to like again like see and, and hear from other winery people um what what they got going on and then and then getting that preview that that kind of vip ish mm -hmm. access to the tasting before the rest of the public and yeah. let me tell you there was a ton of people there yeah. i was absolutely I, I don't know why i don't know why i was surprised i wasn't surprised because the general public loves going to wine yes. tastings well, and it you was know. at a really cool venue. So it's yeah, it was like cool everybody venue, wanted yeah. to come there too. Yeah, and and you know, I didn't know the level of your marketing of it. I just knew I got an email, like, cool, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can make that work, I wanna yeah. go. And then, you know, at the end of the day, I was like, oh my goodness, like the place was absolutely packed. Yeah, and it, it was, was great awesome. to see that because, you know, a lot of people were interested in, in Texas wines and I'm sure for, I don't know, like 30 some odd wineries there. Yeah. It felt like it was a tight, I almost, I, I, I think there like, were 27, yeah. I got that all but like one table, yeah. I think. Yeah. And I spit <laughs> like 99%. We, we gave spit cups, like branded spit yeah, cups. Like 99% of the ones I spit. <laughs> um, not because they were bad, because yeah, yeah. anyway. Um, but it was it was just amazing to see that and there was definitely wineries that were new to me they weren't necessarily that new but new to me i guarantee you're new to the the people that were there right right um even some of the established wineries that maybe they hadn't had a chance to try their stuff they were afraid to buy it off the shelf um because you know and that's that's wine in general if you don't know the winery you you're no matter what anyone tells you yeah. you're well, how much how much is it right. uh i'm gonna go with my tried and true yeah 
because a lot of people, while they say they like to try new things, when they, when when the rubber hits the road and they got to pay for yeah. it, they they don't always do it. Yeah. So those events I think are yeah. great to really promote yeah. Texas wine. Well, so we started those events um, back up full time last year, and they're mm. called the road shows. Yeah. And so the idea is to take the wineries on the road to cities across Texas. And you say we were in Austin, which like it's not a city across te Texas because it's in most of our backyards, but what we notice even about Austin, which is right there, is that people there don't know about exactly. what's in their backyard. They don't know that Texas wine is right out here in the hill country. And so even those established wineries who probably should have a presence in Austin came to that tasting and people discovered them because they didn't know it was out here. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was kind of a weird weird we did, thing we have the same problem with san antonio i mean we're well, oh, austin and we're san antonio coming to san antonio Sweet. in fall but it's like austin and san antonio we both have that like we are we are the closest major cities yeah. to the hill country and even the, my colleagues in the industry on, on the on the selling side i'm like you know it's like an hour hour and a half depending on where you're going and where yeah. you're coming yeah. from you know you can make a day trip out of it like if you need some advice on who to go see i can just, i know people right you know, your industry, so you probably will get a break. Yeah. Um, yes, there, we have perks. Um, if you're in the industry, there's a lot of perks. You don't, not everything's free, but you usually get some type of extra special treatment. Yeah. Um, so um, so don't go to wine or say that you're like in the industry and can't back it up. Like I show my business card yes. to everybody. Um, but, um, you know, for people in our industry, especially if they have Texas wines on their list uh, or in their set, I, they, they need to go. Yeah. Especially the ones that they sell, go right. to the ones that you sell, right. but go explore the other ones, right. you know? And, um, there's so many people that it, who don't do that. And it is literally in your backyard. And yeah. I think that as a sommelier that you should travel. I mean, I get it. I, I don't get to travel as much as I used to, um, for various reasons, yeah. but it's important. I think not just for like exams, but right. just for understanding wine and the regions that you're selling um and texas is a region that is the easiest place for us to travel to because we don't have to fly anywhere right. it's relatively inexpensive okay yes in the summertime hill country it's hotels rough. get really expensive <laughs> but this time of year oh my goodness the wineries would mm -hmm. love to have you yeah um because they they don't have a lot going on yeah they you don't. know so um yeah so i thank you for all the stuff that you do the the road shows and all the little things and the little tailgates i try to participate as much as i can it just kind of depends on my own schedule yeah. uh, and where something's going to be at um well and, we are coming to you in san antonio okay. this fall all right i'm, I'm looking forward yeah. to doing that so awesome. i don't have to go anywhere <laughs> I, you know and, and i I, com I complain i'm not gonna say i say i complain all the time that we have visitors come to texas mm -hmm. and they skip us they yeah. go to Austin, Dallas, and Houston. Yeah. Uh, they don't come to San Antonio. Mm -hmm. um, so if they come to Austin, it, it, then we have to drive up to Austin yeah. for San Antonio. And again, I'm usually one of a very small number of people that go to these, whether it's a um, you know, a, a class, mm -hmm. you know, like an official thing, like educational yeah. thing or a tasting. Um, I'm usually one of the only San Antonio participants. And it's been that way for mm -hmm. over a decade. Huh. That's I was for a long, long time, except I've, now I know there were other San Antonio people at Texas. Yeah, yeah. But for a long, long time, I was literally the only one that I knew of in, from San Antonio. The people that were going that I didn't know, there was like maybe one or two other people. It just worked out that way. Yeah. But for a long time, I'd be the only San Antonio representative um, to, at Texas. And then when Scott Oda moved down to San Antonio, he would start bringing his team and other people started going, oh, we should go to Texas. I'm like... Dude, been there. Going? I'm, I'm going to volunteer there. What, now, anyway, I love Scott, by the way. Yeah. Um, awesome. I, I tell people I want to be him when I grow up. Um, but uh, yeah, so thank you for coming to San Antonio. Yeah, I'm um, excited. You know, even if it's, you know, the locals, it, uh, it's good to, to let people in San Antonio know, again, in mm -hmm. your backyard. Yes. You have some amazing wines yeah. and you should go see them. And they're yeah. not they're not that far away. And you don't yeah. have to wait for the bachelorette, bachelorette party to go. No, we don't. <laughs> you just come on any random weekday. <laughs> they, yeah, weekdays are the best yeah. days. Not just here, anywhere yeah. in, the, in the wine world. Yes. The weekday, if you can do it, is the best day of the week to go. The Saturdays and Sundays, especially in the summertime, is a madhouse. Yeah. But yeah, go yeah. go during the week. Yeah. Especially in February or, oh, okay. So I was like, so, all right. 
here's this this is my this is my one excel cult conspiracy theory except for this year the reason we've had it in january is because your name the symposium <laughs> I told John I was going to tell you yes. that. <laughs> we're going to go with that. <laughs> I thought about that a few years ago. I was like, wait a minute. We're always in January. Our name's January. That's probably why we have it. It's just a good time of year for it, everyone to come out. It's a good time of year, but here's why I do it, really. Okay. I do it mid, we do it mid January so that it's done before my birthday. So I can be done with all the work by, before my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I do know your birthdays and not that yes. I know, no, but I, I've seen yeah. like everyone saw your jokes. So yeah. I'm going to guess, is that why your, why your name is January? Yes. You're born January? Okay. Yeah. They, I mean, it's kind of an obvious yeah. thing, but. It was kind of like a last minute. They thought I was going to be born. And they were like, oh, what if it's a girl? Oh, uh, let's go with this. All right, cool. But I love it. Well, um, unless there's anything else you need to do, um, I mean, you're a busy person. I know the conference is over at Symposium. Yes. It's over, but I'm sure there's some end of Symposium things that you need to get going. And, no, and didn't doing. you hear me give my, like, goodbye speech oh, before yeah. the keynote True speaker that. started? True I was that. Like, it's back in January next it year. It is. Yep, January uh, 12 through 15. 12 through 15. Yeah. Um, um, oh, um, just not that we have to go too much about it, but um, pretty much every year on the Sunday you have a, a, a dinner, right? Yeah. So kind of talk about that real yeah, quick. Yeah, we actually just started that. Um, this was our third winemaker dinner on mm -hmm. Sunday. And so we do those throughout the year. We do quarterly winemaker dinners mm -hmm. at uh, different restaurants across the Hill Country. We do them at uh, Hill and Vine and Sage. And um, we work, tried to get one done at Pius and Dripping Springs and mm -hmm. Our goal there is to feature different wineries at each dinner, but work with a local restaurant so we can, you know, kind of grow that relationship. Um, and all the proceeds from those dinners go to our scholarship fund. Which is also but, the hat. Yes. Buying the hat did yes, that. <laughs> it did. Um, and so we decided when we brought, when we started to do these, we thought, well, we're going to kick off the year with our first one on Sunday at Horseshoe Bay, right before a symposium, everybody, all of our board members are usually here. Um, it'll just be like a nice first thing for the first of the year to honor the board as well. Right. Um, and it's supposed to be, all the rest of them are consumer focused. It is mm -hmm. mostly consumers. We have a couple wineries that come to them that aren't pouring wines, right? Um, and so we started this here and the first year it was, probably 70, 30, 70% consumers. And then the next year it was like 50, 50 consumers and industry members. We had wineries that were attending symposium that were registering and coming to the dinner and vendors that were coming to the dinner to support. And then this year it was probably 90% vendors and other wineries that came cool. to support our board. And so it was really cool. So we, um, that's also why we started doing sessions on Mondays and now we're a three day conference. Right. So there's, there was a couple times that I came up here. Like, I think one of my first times coming up here, the way the schedule looked and where I misread it, I thought there was something on Monday. So I would show up on Sunday. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And I was like, and then I'm like, I have all day Monday. What am I going to do? <laughs> you know? Um, so like cool place to hang after out, the though. first couple times of, and now it's, now you have the Monday session. Now we so, have Mondays. Yeah. So yeah. So now it's, now it's yeah. fine if I come up on Sunday. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was one year I was staying in Marble Falls and, and I showed up and I was like, I was like, dang it. And I don't, I don't remember what I, I didn't do anything that day. I, <laughs> I thought about going to Save the World Brewery because it was actually kind of right by the hotel I was staying at. Yeah. Um, but for whatever reason, I didn't go. And it was a Monday, so I don't even think they were open right, that day. Right. So I think I would have had to like arrange it ahead of time. Um, and I don't remember what that might have been the day I went to that to the to that cafe that's famous for their pies. Oh, or whatever. blue bonnet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had breakfast. So I, didn't have, I didn't have any so pie. Good. I had breakfast there. Yeah. Uh, it was good. Um, but yeah, they um, yeah the Monday thing. But yeah, yeah. So I just. I'm glad, I'm glad you do that stuff. And I'm glad to hear that you have a lot of industry people supporting that. Yeah, so. it's really, it's been pretty cool. And so that's what happened is industry people came to that and then they were here on Sunday for the dinner. And then they were like, well, we're bored on Monday. Why are we not doing anything on Monday? And we're like, well, we don't start till Tuesday. You know, we yeah. got to get ready. And so then two years ago, we decided to do stuff on mm -hmm. Monday. So we come in and we get everything set up on Sunday morning afternoon-ish yeah. and then do the dinner and then we kick off with some stuff on Monday and then go cool. through Wednesday. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad it is. I'm glad you have three full days now because yeah. you get a lot of, you get a lot of value, I think out of it. Good. So. I'm glad.
Cool. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? No, I just want to thank you. Thanks for supporting the 25th anniversary yeah. of the scholarship fund. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we appreciate it. And awesome. Being here all the time. All right. So good. All right, folks. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. January again, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, just make sure you like, subscribe, tell your friends about it, and uh, we'll see everyone again next time.